Two years ago, I built one of my favorite projects ever. It was a desktop app where you put in ingredients and get recipes out as a result. Now, as someone who loves to cook at home, I often had this problem where I had lots of ingredients, but had no idea what to cook. And it often came out to be that I was throwing a lot of these ingredients out at the end of the week. While this solution worked, I never found myself using it. And looking back, I realized because it was very simple, it had a bit of a boring design and it was a desktop app. So very hard to use when in the kitchen and cooking. So recently I decided to rebuild the entire project to something brand new that I'm calling Pantry Pal, a mobile cooking app to help you in the kitchen, find recipes, reduce your food waste and use up what you already have. To those who are new and returning, welcome in. My name is Marcel and I'm a software engineering student from Australia. I like talking about the industry, projects I'm working on and things I'm just learning day to day. So let's talk about the project. The main difference here between what I'm calling Virtual Pantry, which is the old project, and the new project Pantry Pal is that it's a mobile app. The reason I decided to go for a mobile app is for two key reasons. And the first one being is that, like I already mentioned, a desktop app working in the kitchen is very hard to use, very immobile, and it's something you wanna be updating often with my app. So it's kind of hard to do that when it's just on your computer. The second reason is that I've been working in web development for quite some time now. So I've never tried mobile development and wanted something new and a bit of a challenge. An old mentor of mine who I used to work with, who was a great senior engineer, he recommended Swift. And for those who don't know, Swift is the programming language you use when making iOS only apps. And the reason he recommended it is because one, it's a great programming language, but two, there's a lot of jobs available with Swift and a lot of iOS development gigs around. So he suggested that kind of for my portfolio. There's the added bonus as well. I think just having your own mobile app that you can share with other people is really cool and something to be proud of. So in terms of functionality, it shares a lot of the same functions as the old program originally had. So the main flow is that you add ingredients to your ingredients list or what I call your pantry. And when you do that, I have a big list of recipes which filters through the ingredients you already have. It filters it or rather sections it by what you can cook with those ingredients or what you can nearly cook. So if you add garlic and black pepper, for an example, you can then unlock a bunch more ingredients. That was the only functionality that the old manager had. Some of the additional features of Pantry Bell though include the shopping list where you can send ingredients from your pantry to the shopping list and tick them off as you go the ability to favorite recipes, which I'm very excited about, and a list which shows the ones that you've recently cooked. Alongside these features, you may notice as well that the design of the app has gone 100x. When I first built Virtual Pantry, I was very functionality focused. I didn't care about how it looked. And this time I went the opposite because I find personally, I don't know if you guys are the same, when I work on a project, I just want it to work. And I always find myself getting it working and then kind of dropping it and never care about the design. So this has made my portfolio look really ugly, if I'm gonna be honest. So having this kind of design first focus, which I'll get into later, has really benefited the project. Now, speaking of the design of Pantry Power, that's kind of where we got started. As I mentioned, I wanted to go for that design first approach. So when I launched the project back in January of this year, so about five months ago from filming, I decided to teach myself Figma. Now, for those who don't know, Figma is an online free, for most of the time, tool where you can create mock-ups, designs, prototypes of whatever you want. And it's mainly used for websites and mobile apps from my understanding, but can be done for a lot more other projects as well. Using the design first focus, I set myself the challenge of having to have a full mock-up of the app done with each page and every flow being drawn out on Figma before I could start coding. So that's how I got started. I started with Pinterest boards, getting some ideas of the style that I wanted and the color palette. I learned how to make components, different pages, build out the entire flow. And it took some time because I was starting from zero design experience, zero Figma knowledge, and had to teach myself everything. But I got to say it was so worth it because going through that process, you realize how much detail and important parts of design there are. You don't even think about when coding, but doing it first actually makes it so much easier to code. I'm saying that now because when I built out the components in code, I could just look at the Figma file and it would be like, oh, padding this and this. And I already knew I didn't have to play around with it in the code like I used to. And development time has sped up like exponentially because of it. So during those couple months, after a lot of planning, a lot of feedback, I had the complete designs of Pantry Pal. Now, shortly after the designs were complete, I was lucky enough to come around a community called Blackbird Protostars. 
And if you don't know what that is, Protostars is a community run by the venture capital firm Blackbird. And it's essentially a two month program where you get a micro grant for your project if you get in and you get a community to build your project with. Each week you meet up and discuss a certain topic for the week, such as, you know, building in public, growing a community around your project and trying to get it from zero to one. Luckily, I was one of the top 30 to get into the program, which I still can't believe. Essentially, the micro grant was absolutely amazing. It helped cover some of the licensing costs for development and a bunch of other things. But honestly, the accountability of having to show up each week, learn, um, give updates on your project and your feedback, it was just really encouraging to keep going and keep pushing and get this out by a set date. Before this program, I was planning on making it a private app just for me to use and maybe some friends and family because I didn't have any ambition or hope that anyone that would actually want to use it outside my close friend group. But this program really gave me the confidence to put it out there. This is why I'm making a video about it. This is why I want to publish it to the app store and make it available for everyone. I'm just really grateful for them and for everything they did, so I cannot thank them enough. Before I move on as well, I just want to say, you guys, if you're based in Australia, and I think under 25 is the age restriction, you guys should definitely sign up for Protostars. They do three to four programs every year. Uh, I believe they're going into season four right now, so it's a thousand dollar micro grant to your project if you get in a community that is so supportive and lovely and will push you to get towards your goals. Cannot recommend it enough, so go research it. I'll leave some links in the description if you want to go straight to their website. Now, onto the coding side and the actual development of the app. Similar to Figma and the design side of things, I had no experience with iOS development, mobile development at all, and definitely not with Swift and Xcode. It was quite the ride. I spent days and days and days watching tutorials, reading documentation, doing some like quick boot camps on the side to try and get myself jump started so I could get to the point where I could build features day to day and get that progress going. Today is the 6th of May, and so far we have made some pretty good progress. I've been coding for about two months now, and every day I spend at least one hour, sometimes up to like four to five to six hours a day coding um, after hours, so we've had, some, <laughs> we've had some late nights. But I've got a bunch of features working, the basic flow of the app of adding ingredients, seeing recipes, adding to your shopping list, that is all complete. So now that I have a lot of features and functionality done, I'm actually looking at a launch date of June. Now this isn't a open launch where it's on the app store and anyone can download it. I'm thinking more of like a private beta where I send it to friends and family and some of you guys as well to test the app, say what you like and you don't and improve it overall. Now this is so when I do launch the app store, there's not some serious bugs that I've overlooked that ruin the experience for some people and it can be a great user experience to use the app. If you want to help out as well and become a beta tester for the app, I would really love that. So I've got a link in the description which you guys can click and apply to. So that is the current state of Pantry Pal and honestly where I have been for the past couple months. I've been wanting to make more videos but I've just been so caught up in building every day that I haven't had the time. But now that I'm kind of past the point of all the major development has been done, I'm hopefully going to return to making regular YouTube videos. But anyway, folks, I will keep you updated with the progress of Pantry Pal when we launch and a bunch of other things like that. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you want to continue following my journey, you can subscribe to the channel, but also follow my Twitter because every day I'm posting updates about Pantry Pal, how development is going, and I will also talk about the testing or the beta testing of the app when that is live. If you like this video and are maybe interested in programming as well, you can check out my programming fundamentals video that taught me everything I learned in uni. But anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. See you everyone.